It's been a long day. I came home from work and had to immediately take my daughter to chorus. I sat in the back as I've noticed that I can be a bit distracting in my attempts to be supportive. Lindsay put everything into her voice tonight. I could pick her out from the rest of the group due to her angelic voice she got from her mother. Now if only she was here to see her daughter excel so much. The show had finally ended. All of the parents and their kids were preparing to leave. I stood by the car, waiting so Lindsay could take some time to chat with her friends before she left. I saw her jogging towards me in open arms. You did great tonight, Lynn. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. It's no wonder they chose you to stand front and center. You've been improving your craft ever since you were in kindergarten. Yeah, when I saw a VHS tape of Mom singing, I wanted to be like her. Well, I'd say you're doing a fine job. She'd be proud of you. I know. Hey, I was just talking with Angelique. She was wondering if I could sleep over at her place tonight. Most of the girls were going to come together for a pizza party. Now, as talented as Lindsay could be, I knew she was getting a bit mischievous as she was a teenager. I would try to keep her on the right path, but every now and then, I notice her going against my wishes or even saying some questionable things about her other classmates. I hope it's just a phase, but I'm just not too sure. Okay, as long as I could have a quick word with them. She rolled her eyes knowing why I wanted to speak with them in the first place, but still guided me towards them. Yep, just gonna order a few hot pies from Papa John's to show him a job well done. Tony was a real countryman. We don't really share the same beliefs, but neither does his daughter. We can at least agree to disagree. It's the least we could do to show how proud we are of them. His wife, Beatrice, on the other hand, was a lot more gentle. She'd be the one to put her husband in his place if he ended up going too far about his political rants. I've known these two for as long as Lindsay has known Angelique, but we were more acquaintances than close friends. Okay, sounds good. But could you do me a favor? Well, sure. I'd be right happy to, Frank. If my daughter says anything strange about the other students, would you mind relaying the information back to me? Oh, has your daughter become a bad bitch too, dear? <laughs> ah, so you know. <laughs> I remember when I thought it was hot shit in my school. <laughs> Not with that mole in my head, I wasn't. Don't worry, Frank. I'll be sure to put my 4040 vision into these ears. <laughs> Thanks. I'll see you two tomorrow when I come to pick up Lindsay. I got into my car and left the parking, giving one last look to the pickup truck the girls were riding in. School wasn't too far from the house. I chose to move here to make things as easy as possible for Lindsay. Her mom died when she was only seven months old. She went out to a baby shower for an old friend of hers and she never came back. I called her constantly, but there is no response. It didn't take long for the missing persons, flyers, and the authorities to get involved. Three days later, her body was found in the river. No one knows what happened, but it wasn't an accident. Her head was apparently torn off her body. I say that because it wasn't cut off. It was as if something took bites out of her neck. I thought the worst instantly that somebody killed my wife, but the authorities believed it was a wild animal attack. That's one of the reasons I moved into town, not only to make her trip to school easier, but also so I wouldn't have to live in fear of some vicious predator attacking my daughter and meeting the same fate as Olivia. I turned into the garage, shut down the car, and walked into the house. I decided to fix myself a microwave dinner and watch some Criminal Minds on Netflix. About an hour later, my phone started ringing. It was Tony. Oh no, what happened? Hello? Hey, uh, uh, Frank, y you might want to come down here. Uh-oh. Did Lindsay do something? No, no, look, I'll explain when you get here. Okay. I picked up the keys and got right back into the car. What happened? Tony didn't sound like himself. I hope everything's okay. I wonder how Lindsay is feeling. My dad's a good person. 
I understand what he's trying to do, but I also wish he would just trust me a bit more. We did go over to Angelique's place, and we did get pizza. We all sat on the floor as we each took a slice. We talked about things like what we would do over the weekend, our future plans, and the current drama. One of my closest friends, Kim, mentioned a boy that we haven't seen in a while. She goes into detail about how she believes that this weirdo was stalking her. Whether that was true or not, he still gives me the creeps. Do you think he's autistic? Autists do that, right? Asked Lacey, my friend from Chorus. I bet he hit his head when he was a baby, and now he's detached and antisocial. Renee told me the boys are always bullying him because this one time he shat his pants in PE class, said Angelique. Really? really? Maybe. We all laughed. Angelique could be such an evil bitch. <laughs> I'm going to the bathroom. You girls better not touch my pepperoni. Kim told us before standing. It's nice to hang out with friends. Pizza's good too. Especially pepperoni. Hmm. Maybe if I just take a little bite from her slice, she won't... <coughs> we heard a shriek from Kim. Uh, Kim? We rushed out of the room. Kim, what happened? She was in Angelique's parents' bedroom, pointing out the window. There was terror in her face. I never saw her like that. Look! We get closer. We look. There's a guy. Young. He's standing there. Naked. Only a bag over his head. Hands behind his back. Looking at us. Just looking at us. I, I was going to the bathroom, and I glanced at the window. And he was there, like this! Said Kim, insecure. This was creepy. So creepy. We were frozen in place. This is an enjoyable right. evening. Right, girls. The figure suddenly said, He was trying to talk to us. Oh my god! What, what do we do? Lacey whispered, afraid. I I'll tell dad! Said Angelique before she dashed out of the room. Close the blinds, Lindsay! Close it! I heard Kim tell me. I love the faces of pretty girls like you, the creepy man said. My trembling fingers closed the blinds. Please go away, please go away. Makes me want to see you closer. We looked through the blinds. He was walking to the house, closer to us. My heart was racing. My eyes were fixed on him. No, 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 stop, no, stop, no. Who are you? What do you think you're doing? It was Angelique's dad. He had stepped outside. The creepy man turned his head from us and started running. Hey, come back here! Angelique's dad yelled. But the man just kept running. Come back, you coward! Motherfucking pervert! I'll kill you! I'll shoot you! Come back here! I saw Angelique's dad run after the man for a while. They turned the corner. I lost track of them. Not long after, Angelique's dad is back. He was tired, and still angry. But I couldn't see the man. The man was gone. Gone. All I could think was, thank God. We got out of the window and looked at each other. We were all shocked. Lacey started sobbing, a deep, painful sob. We stayed a couple minutes like this. I suddenly realized Angelique's dad was downstairs, talking to someone on the phone. I could make out a single sentence. Hey, uh, uh, Frank, y you might want to come down here. I'll say it again, I can't thank you two enough for what you did. I still couldn't believe in all of this. Believe people like that could be so close to us. To me and my daughter. I'm glad Tony and Beatrice were there to protect her. No worries, hon. But right now, we just want you to get her home safe. You okay with that? Sure thing, ma'am. Best thing I've heard all day. Have a good night, you two. With those words, I turned on the ignition, and me and Lindsay were on our way. 
She was silent for a while now, awake but motionless. No wonder. I can't imagine what she must be feeling. Is she afraid? Pensive? Numb? All I know is she's safe now. Perhaps that's all that matters. Suddenly, Lindsay starts talking. I think I know who he was, Dad. What? I think it was a boy from our school. He's a stalker, and Kim is his target. A boy from your school? Stalker? Yeah, and we heard his voice. I know it's him. We should tell the police. That was sudden. I thought about her accusation for a moment. That was sudden. I thought about her accusation for a moment. I trust my girl, but this sounds unlikely. Lynn, even if you're right, I don't think an arrest can be made. That man left no real evidence. All we have is your word. It won't be enough. I don't think I said what she wanted to hear. Sadly, it was what she needed to. We arrive home. I feel tired. I bet she does too. My only solace is knowing tomorrow is Saturday. She'll have the weekend to recover from this. And when Monday comes, I hope she'll be alright. She has to decide what she wants to do about all this. I open our front door. Lindsay gets in before me. She climbs up the stairs, gets in the bathroom. I go to the bedroom. Laying in bed, I realize how agitated I am inside. I keep imagining the scene Tony described to me. The bagged man. Things he could have done to my daughter. Olivia comes to my mind. And what happened to her? God forbid I lose Lindsay as well. I hear something. Come and try a little, nothing is forever. Uh... Oh, that's Lynn. She's singing in the shower. That... that makes me feel better, actually. Maybe she's not that devastated. Maybe I should relax a bit then, get some sleep. Her voice is heavenly as always. <laughs> I hear... crying. Lindsay? I get out of bed as quickly as I hear it. She's downright sobbing. Somewhere in the house. God, maybe she was devastated last night and I've just... I'm just stupid. I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. I go to the hall. The noise is coming from downstairs. I rush. She's in the living room, holding the phone. She looks at me. Dad! She looks at me. Her eyes are red. Tears on her. She's not okay. What happened? Who's on the phone? It's Kim's mom! Kim's missing! What? Kim's missing! It was the boy! Dad, it was the stalker! It was the stalker! I know it! Honey, calm down. It was the stalker, Dad. I told you last night. Honey, calm down. I get closer and hold her. She's trembling. Dropped the phone. She can't stop talking. The stalker came for Kim, Dad! She got home from Angelique's last night, but now she's not in her house, and they don't know where she is, and someone broke into their house last night, and it's the stalker! And he's gonna kill my friend! And then he's gonna bury her, and then he's gonna look for more, and then he's gonna stalk me! Because I was always hanging out with Kim, and then... Honey. And then... Honey. She finally stops. She looks at me, frozen. Stop. I'm here, okay? Nothing's gonna happen to you. I'm here. Calm down. But Dad... I'll always be here. I press her closer. Her head is resting on my chest now. And she stopped freaking out. I think I'm actually managing to comfort her. Even if I can still feel her tears on my pajamas. We stayed that way for a couple of seconds. Always. Okay? Okay. Good. Never forget that. I slowly let her go. I pick up the phone from the floor. 
I'm going to talk to Kim's mom now, okay? I got to know exactly what happened. From what I can tell, this was serious. Lynn just told me there was a kidnapper in the neighborhood. In our neighborhood. I'm not letting her go outside if that's the case. I lost her mother. I'm not losing her. I'll wait until they get the culprit and her friend is found if I have to. And by then, I hope she'll stop with the stalker boy paranoia. That's just an overreaction. Right? Hello, this is Frank. Lindsay's father. It's been a whole day. I think I have my emotions under control now. Dad said he wanted to stay longer next to me, but I told him he had already done so much. I went to my room. I wanted to meditate on this. Not sure I managed to. I can't stop thinking about Kim. And at the same time, I can't stop thinking. What if it was me? Would I be in his basement? Is that where she is? Would he be torturing me? Would I be dead? Am I a bad friend? Maybe I should do something about this. For Kim. But what? I realize my laptop is close to me, at my table. I take it, turn it on. Maybe there's something to be found on the internet. Maybe there's someone to talk to. Nobody's online on Facebook. I send the girls a message anyway. Are you okay? Say hi. I hope they answer. I really hope Kim's the only one missing. I look at the screen for a brief moment. Hmm. I just had an idea. I search for the boy. I remember his name. It was... Arthur? I found him! Turns out he hasn't posted anything in days. Neither has his mother. I can't even find his father's profile. Maybe he doesn't use Facebook? Wait. I think I know this kid. Oh my god. He was in the chorus. I remember seeing him in the chorus. He was the most awkward and shy guy I've ever seen. No. More than that. There was a look on his face when he saw me singing. He was downright... creepy. Oh, Lacey said something. That makes me really glad. I really want to talk to her. I check her messages, and we start talking. Angelique joins us a few minutes later. Nobody is feeling well. They're as creeped out as I am. At some point, Angelique asks me what I think we should do. I wish I knew. I think I decided, though. After chatting for a while, I think I made a decision. I'm going to shut myself in, lock the windows, close the blinds. The cops will take care of it. I just have to protect myself until this is all over. Until they get him. Please get him. Please. It's Sunday. We are at the church. Lindsay looks bothered. We had a discussion before coming here. I look at her and give a fake smile. She notices it but does nothing more. She thinks she should stay home. I insist on coming and she eventually conceded. I can understand her. At first that's what I had decided too, right? To protect her until the culprit is caught? I don't know what made me change my mind. Maybe I felt weak, in need of guidance. And well, if I keep changing my mind that easily, maybe I am really weak. Maybe I am really weak. Maybe I do need the Lord's grace. I am a terrible father. I say that I say of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. 
I echo the priest. Me and the church crowd sit. Me and the church crowd sit. Brothers and sisters, before we continue our spiritual meditations, it has come to my attention a recent matter, that which I fully believe should be addressed. For the disappearance of a single devoted participant of the Holy House of Christ brings my genuine concern. He goes on talking about Kim and what happened to her. I appreciate his intentions, but I'm not sure he's making people here actually feel safer. Lynn's looking at an empty seat on the row to our left. That's... that's where that Arthur kid was, right? Arthur Andrews? I remember him. I think I saw that face a couple of times on chorus. Lynn kept telling me that he was the stalker. That he got Kim. She showed me his profile on social media yesterday. She couldn't stop giving him the weird eye when we got there. Dear God. I suppose he's a big kid. Could drive a car, jump over some fences. But that's still my daughter's imagination. He's not the kidnapper. I'm sure he's harmless. Wait. Arthur left just as the pastor began his speech on Kim's disappearance, right? I think he's the only one who left. That's... suspicious. When I look at Lindsay, I think she got the same idea. She's giving me that look. As if saying, Did you see that? Do you believe me now? I'm... I... I'm not sure if I believe in you yet, Lynn. But I definitely feel a bit worried, I admit. I'm starting to see a bit where you're coming from. Regardless of my feelings and suspicions, though, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. We have no evidence to accuse him, and Lindsay is borderline paranoid right now. I think it's best we give ourselves time to cool down. After an hour or two, the congregation is over, and we get in the car. Lynn is relieved to be going home. It's easy to notice, aside from, the st I'm, aside from Arthur's strange behavior. Leaving the house was pretty uneventful. I think we'll be fine. Oh, there are police cars and ambulance up ahead. The press, too. Surrounding a house. There's an old woman at the yard, screaming at the cops and there's a body bag at the ground. Jesus, what happened here? We were passing near it, one second was all it took for me to hear it. Calm down, Miss Andrews. Please calm down. We're doing everything we can. I freeze. I look at Lynn. She got the same reaction. I park immediately and we get out of the car. Excuse me, is this the Andrews residence? I approach the commotion. Are you a friend or family of the residence? Asks me a cop. No, but my daughter knows the son from Chorus and- Then I must ask you to step back, sir. We need to do he our- He killed my baby! He killed my Arthur! Why did they kill my Arthur? God, why did they do this? God, why? He was found dead. Arthur Andrews was found dead in his home. I checked the news on my phone after getting back in Dad's car. It's already on the internet. Those reporters work fast. Maybe. Maybe it was Arthur's father, right? Maybe Arthur got in the wrong crowd, what with all the sneaking and stalking, and maybe his dad went nuts on him. Right? It doesn't say much in the article. I think that's what happened. I text the girls. Did you see the news? Yeah, Arthur is dead? Lacey says. We're chatting, and I can tell they don't know how to feel about this. I think Dad's feeling worse. His face is a mix of worry and confusion. We arrive home. Lynn. He says while opening the door. 
Yeah? You're not leaving the house tomorrow. Got it. Got it. Well, I guess I read him right. I go to my room, turn on my computer, I spend the whole day talking to the girls and thinking about the situation. It's about nighttime when I suddenly realize something. If the stalker is gone now, then where's Kim? She's still missing! Did the police find any clues in Arthur's house? Maybe they did, and they're looking into it. Right? Right? I just hope Kim's okay. Lindsay! Huh? Lindsay, over here! What? I can't believe it! That's Kim's voice! I run to the window. I can't see her anywhere. Lindsay, come over here. Bring your phone. I need to call my parents. Hurry! I think she's somewhere at the back of my house. Okay! I'm coming! Where are you? Just hurry! I put my phone in my pocket and get downstairs faster than I ever did. I open the front door and sprint to the back. When I get there, I still can't find her. Over here, Lindsay. I'm in the forest. Come on! Why the hell did you go to the forest? I'm coming! I go to the forest near my home. What made her go there all of a sudden? Whatever. I just need to see her face again. See that my friend is alive and well. I'm a little deep in the woods now, but I still can't seem to find her. It's so dark. I turn on my cell phone light. Where are you? Are you hiding some- I suddenly realize that there's a dead body on the ground in front of me. It's Kim. That dead body is Kim. Her skin is pale. There are maggots in her flesh, and her jaw is completely ripped off. I freeze. I almost throw up. I want to scream. Lindsay, you made it. That came from her. Her voice came from her rotting body. Oh my god, what's happening? Wait, no. I think it came from behind me. I run. I don't know what it is. I just run. Something's behind me. I hear a rustle. I think it tried to hit me and missed. And now it's chasing after me. I try to glimpse at it. It... It... It has no arms? Lindsay, get behind me. That's Dad's voice. I look ahead and he's there. He's there. He's holding a shotgun. Dad! I run to him. I hug him. I just hug him. I hear him reloading the shotgun. I look back. I think that thing hid. Dad points the gun in a general direction, but nowhere in specific. You want to get shot, you son of a bitch. Dad yells. He gets no response. The thing doesn't show itself. You can't share your talent without expecting others to try and take it. It said suddenly. What? What? Wait. No. That's Arthur's voice. I remember. That's Arthur's voice. I say it out loud, half shocked. My dad looks at me for a brief moment, showing concern and surprise. He turns back to the woods. Don't you get any closer to me or my daughter ever again! As he says that, Dad starts walking back slowly. I walk with him. He still has the shotgun ready. The thing is still hidden. I will fucking kill you. We walk until we get out of the forest. We can see home. We start running. We get inside. Dad locks the door. When did you say your daughter found this body, sir? I think it was about 7 o'clock. I answer the policewoman. Alright, and where were you exactly at this time? There are about four cops conducting the investigation near our home. Plus one in the forest. 
Kim's parents are here too, Marcus and Camille. I can see them sobbing a couple of feet to my right. Sometimes they look at me in a funny way. I'm not the killer. Stop doing that. Can you give me an accurate description of who attacked you, sir? I look at Lindsay. She looks back at me. From what I saw, he was a man completely covered in blood. And he had no arms! An armless man completely covered in blood. Yes, well... Team! I'm gonna need full assistance! Everyone come here! It was the cop from the forest. Sounds like this is urgent, whatever it is. Roger that. She puts away her pen and her notepad block. I'll be right back. She runs to where her workmate is. The other police officers follow after. Must be an important clue. Or something that demands many pairs of hands. Would they need the whole team, though? Wait. I remember this one Criminal Minds episode where... I hear a gunshot. Then many. And screams, agonizing and panicked screams. It all came from the forest. Oh no. No, 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 no. I turn to Kim's family. I'm not taking any chances. Run! It is not safe to be here! Don't overreact, Frank. It must be a wild animal. No, you don't understand. There are no animals in these woods. This must be the thing I saw. The blooded man? I think they're getting it now. But it's too late. Something bit off Camille's throat. It came from nowhere. It is a man bathed in blood and with no arms. It is that thing. Wait. It's not a man. It's head. It's head is a hand. I can see a big mouth at the palm. This is horrendous. This is a monster. The monster turns to Camille's husband and speaks perfectly in her voice. Oh dear. I heard your wife likes to be choked. Marcus tries to run away, but stumbles. This gives chance to the monster. It lunges at Marcus and brings him to the ground. It ferociously ravages at Marcus's flesh, using its teeth. This is absolutely horrifying. Hellish. I grab Lindsay and run to our front door. We get inside, I grab the shotgun. Lindsay, stay in your room and lock the door. She was already climbing the stairs when I tell her this. She stops to listen to me. Then she looks at something behind me. I turn around. The monster is at our doorstep. Its mouth is open, I realize there's an eye inside of it. And it's looking at Lindsay. Don't hide your voice, darling. If someone like me can show his face around so many people, then you can sing for me. Or maybe I'll do that for you. God, 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 that thing wants me! My room! I have to get there! I run panicked. I made it. Lock the door, lock the door! Okay, okay, got it. I thought I was safe now. I thought Arthur was dead, and there was nothing to worry about, and... And... It killed people in seconds! Oh God, oh God! It isn't afraid of being seen, and it can mimic voices. It almost caught me in the forest that way. I have to be careful. I have to be careful. Oh, oh no, I hear footsteps. Lindsay, open the door. That's Dad. I get to unlocking it. I have to be quick before... Wait, no, 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 that's stupid. That's the monster. He's trying to trick me. It's unlocked, I say. It was. I'm trying to hold it off. Just open the door, Lindsay. Oh no, what if it is dead? That monster has no hands, so it can't open doors, right? Right? What do I do? What do I do? I can't let the monster in. Please be dead. Please just open it yourself, dad. Please just... A shotgun blast. Then another. Then another. It came from the hall. What just happened? Did it die? Did Dad? I'm holding my breath. Seconds pass. Slowly. So slowly. It's just quiet there now. It's so quiet over there that it hurts. It's okay. 
It's dead. Oh God, God, I can't believe it! I can't believe we made it! I just need to hug my dad right now. Tight. Let me open it. I just... I see my dad's eviscerated corpse laying in front of my door. And the monster facing me with dad's shotgun under its foot. You should have opened the door. It speaks in my dad's voice. I'm crying. I turn. I see my window. I try to run. But the monster's faster. He bites my leg. I feel it. Hard. I go down. I try smacking at it. It's no use. That was my computer. On my desk. Just next to me. I grab the metal legs and topple the whole thing over the monster. I free myself. I run to the hall. I run to the shotgun. I grab it. I aim at the thing. I press the trigger. It's empty. No. I drop it. I run to the stairs. I'm a few steps from the ground floor when he gets me. That thing jumps on me from the hall and brings my head down hard on the wooden floor. I... It hurts so much. I can't think straight. The monster is on top of me. Your voice sticks out the most. I need it for my chorus. I can feel something in my mouth. Then reaching down my throat. I... I... Measuring her heart should be the last step before I can allow this girl to leave the hospital premises. That was to be expected. The main concern for this patient was the extensive damage found in her larynx, the voice box. Under the treatment we were able to perform, she will still preserve the ability to eat and breathe properly, albeit with pain and difficulty. However, the nerves and muscles required for speech and sound generation were severely damaged, thus depriving the patient of such capacities. I'm not sure if the situation can ever be reversed, either through surgery or medical hardware. Her throat was in an unprecedented state when she got here. I was not given details, but it appears this girl became an orphan the same day she suffered her casualties. No relative has yet been found to care for her, which means her likely destination is a foster home. In all honesty, what happened to this girl was quite tragic. The life she had and any she could have planned for herself is no more. 